I wanted to talk to you about the threat to your life. Uh, there was an attempt on your life um, at the end of last year, I think. You have said very openly that you believe the government um, may have been behind it and may be behind other plots to kill you. Obviously a very serious allegation. What evidence do you have that that is the case? Well, look, uh, if you... The background is this, that ever since my party was removed from power, never has it happened that a political party's popularity has soared after that. Normally, when a party is removed, you know, in, in the past, people have distributed sweets. The party has gone down and takes time for it to come back up. In this case, the popularity of the party went up. There was a strong reaction to the, my government being removed. Never has it happened. Hundreds and thousands of people came out on the street the next day to protest. So as time passed, the people in power who removed, one was the army chief at that time, and the other were the people who are right now in power. They, they replaced me. So as time passed, they thought it was a bubble. But all the by-elections, and as I said, 37 by-elections took place. We won 30 of them. So it's unprecedented. No party is the sort of popularity that we have. Hence the plot to kill me. Because they thought that, you know, to get me out of the way. And who was responsible? The people in power. One intelligence is agency officer called General uh, 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 Faisal Nasir, And then the prime minister and the interior minister. Both of them have history of extrajudicial killing. I mean, there's an amnesty report about the current prime minister. He, he had some 900 people killed through police encounters. And, and they're both, there was a Bottle Town massacre. Both were involved in it. So they planned it. And a one and a half months before the assassination attempt, I went on public and, and told the public that this is what they have planned. And the, the religious uh, so-called extremist was the one they would palm it off on. So I had predicted that. And it's exactly what happened according to script. Now, why my life is in danger right now? Because the same people are still in power. And they're even more threatened than before because they realize the elections are near and we were going to win. And they are worried that I'll hold them accountable. So that's hence the problem. I'm going, we, I know that the, I'm going to come to sorry, that in a moment. But just talking about your record. No, what, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I will come to that in a moment. Just, 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 I would just let me ask this one question. What the government have said and what um, those who stand against you say is that during your term, you ended up having to uh, turn to the IMF for an economic bailout, that the economy began to tank, that you made controversial comments about uh, Afghanistan and, and the Taliban, that extremists took root in Pakistan. They say your critics that when you were ousted in no confidence vote, you were the first prime minister to whom that had happened. And it was really just your mishandling of your role in office that saw you leave government. And they say that that was a democratic process, the very democratic process that you say doesn't exist. Look, first of all, uh, you know, to answer, I was just about to answer your question. Why did not I turn up to the court? Because my life was under threat. And the court, this particular, the, the particular court where I was supposed to turn up, there have already been two terrorist attacks there and judges and lawyers have been killed. And my, my security team said that there's no way you can go there because no one can secure you. So we had asked to shift the premise to another uh, court of law. And when it was done, I did appear. So this is a fallacy that I did not appear in any court of law. I've, as I said, I have 140 cases and I've, I keep appearing in different courts. Now, when my government was removed, in, in uh, April last year, if you look at the economic survey of Pakistan, which, is the, which surveys the economy, it's an annual report. It was the best economic performance of a team in the last 17 years. It, uh, it overshot all its targets. So whether it was exports, remittances, tax collection, industrial uh, growth, uh, the growth rate was 6 percent which is one of the highest in our history. So uh, to say that the economic performance was bad is ridiculous because all you have to do is look at the economic survey. Uh, and so it was an outstanding performance. But you did Secondly, need a bailout from the IMF. No, no. 
No, we were already in an IMF pr program because when we inherited the economy in 2018, it suffered from the biggest current account deficit. So that meant dollar shortages. So we, we had no choice but to go into an IMF program. And so to say that it was because of economic reasons is just, you know, the, the, the facts and the, the economic serve of Pakistan completely refute that. About my foreign policy, what did I say about Afghanistan? All I said was there would never be any military solution, and there wasn't. And secondly, in Pakistan, I did not agree with the U.S. Pakistan joining the U.S. war on terror because no country has sacrificed so many of its people for some other country like Pakistan did. 80,000 Pakistanis died in the U.S. war on terror. So I was opposed to it because my interests are the people of Pakistan. So a foreign policy must be made for the benefit of your own people, not sacrificing them for some other country. Um, there are now a, a, a raft of charges that have been laid against you, the most serious of which are claims that you are a terrorist working against the interests of Pakistan. What do you say to those charges? Well, Sangeeta, look, people in this country know me for 50 years. I'm probably the person most well-known in my country for, and for the longest time. So they know I've never broken one law in, 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 uh, of Pakistan in these 50 years. So these are completely fabricated uh, cases, politically motivated, basically to keep me out of the election run. You know, we have elections coming up. And the, 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 so far out of the 37 by-elections, my party has won 30 in the last few months. And all the opinion polls uh, show that we are going to win. So rather than face elections, basically they want me somehow out of the race and with a lot of these charges either to jail me or to uh, disqualify me. Members of your team have also been arrested. Um, what is the situation for them? Well, 31, uh, 3,100 of my supporters, uh, of, of PTI workers, they are jailed right now. And this is an unprecedented crackdown which, is, uh, which has happened in Pakistan. It's unique in our a, in a, a, a democratic history. I mean, even in martial laws, this, this was a bit extreme, the way the crackdown has taken place. Um, and this is, again, I repeat, it is to weaken the party because there are elections due this year, and uh, the, the entire ruling coalition is petrified that if uh, elections happen, they'll lose.